My name is Mikasa, and sadly, I can't tell you the precise circumstances under which I was born. My first real memory was of the labor yards, where I often worked the fields from sunup to sundown. Despite my ownership, I considered myself fortunate. The labor camp was relatively safe, far from the larger cities and villages where demon attacks and marauder raids were said to be a regular occurrence. There were plenty of guards who lived there, too, protecting the estate from anything that might threaten our little corner of the world. They made it clear, though, that if we made any escape attempt, they would hunt us down quickly and punish us gladly. So we stayed, and we worked. And Hockey Moreau, the master of our household, always made sure we were fed and watered and in relatively good health. This was the life I knew for the first three years I can remember. It was a nonstop blur of strenuous labor, cracking whips, battering fists, and vulgar swearing. The only kindness I was afforded was the rare gesture from the few slaves that took pity on a girl so young as myself. It was sometime around my fourth year of memory that my world was turned upside down by the man whose story I now write. It was a fairly nondescript day to begin with, as every day tended to be. I was up before the sun had crested the horizon, the sky a blackened bruise fading to blue. It was the best time to tend the garden, before the heat of the day made the chore even more miserable. We grew a variety of vegetables and fruits, some to help feed the compound, and the rest to be taken off to market when the traders came around. I had learned long ago that the slightest damage to any of the stock would immediately lose me twice that amount in rations. So as always, I absorbed myself in my work. I scarcely noticed the figure that was slowly moving in my direction, assuming it to be another slave working his or her way towards where I was picking some apples. It was only after the figure stopped at the foot of the ladder I was using that I turned my attention toward them. When I saw what it was, I immediately dropped the bushel I had been balancing with so much care. What stared back was human in shape, to be generous. I doubt that any man or woman could ever have such a gaunt and featureless face, regardless of malnutrition or disease. Its skin was so tight and sallow, it was more akin to a walking skeleton, covered haphazardly in aged leather than an actual person. It wore no clothing, but likewise lacked any means of determining gender. It gazed hollowly at me with sockets devoid of eyes, toothless maw hanging slightly agape. Before I even knew it, I had leapt from my perch and was halfway back to the compound before the latter had a chance to hit the ground. Stories of ghouls were some of the favorites the slaves told at night. They were said to be soulless husks that demons often kept around as pets or servants to torture their unfortunate victims. I had no intention of experiencing whatever foul deeds it had been sent to do to me, even if it meant punishment from the overseer. And punishment was exactly what I was met with. Even though the overseer saw quite clearly that there was, in fact, a ghoul in the fields, and summarily hurried the slaves in to prevent any damage coming to Master Moreau's property, I was still beaten and denied my meals for the day for the apples I had spilled in my fright. Still, it was better than having my soul sucked out by some monster, and I considered myself lucky nonetheless. All the workers were sent about the manor to tidy up as we waited for the ghoul to hopefully wander off so that we could get back to the fields before long. However, the creature seemed to have taken a liking to the area. It shuffled across the garden one direction, neared the boundaries of it, then turned and wandered back toward the other end. As I watched it out a window I was cleaning, I half mused that it appeared to be looking for something. The ghoul had still not left by sundown, and that meant an entire day's worth of harvesting had been lost. Master Moreau was nearly beside himself with rage, but like the others, he too had heard of what powers these ghouls supposedly possessed. He wasn't about to let his overseers risk themselves trying to drive it off, lest he have to figure out a way to replace them. They were not so expendable as us slaves. With that likely in mind, he came up with a different idea. The next day, when Master Moreau saw that the ghoul had not shambled off yet, he sent one of us to make an attempt at getting rid of the monster. This particular slave was quite the oddity amongst our stable. He had been here for years, according to the older servants, but never once spoke a word to anyone, even Master Moreau. The master often called him Oaf, but as far as the slaves knew, the man had no name and no past. 